We finally have God of War Ragnarok coming to PC on September 19th, and today we got official system requirements. We also have some confirmed PC features like unlocked frame rates, which you know you wouldn't think being able to go over 60 FPS is that big of a deal, but there are still games out there like Elden Ring which don't officially support higher frame rates. Uh, we also have confirmation that we'll have all of the major upscaling technologies in their uh, you know latest revisions, which is big and FSR 3.0. One is really nice because then if you have like a uh, NVIDIA 30 series card or 20 series card, you can use DLSS upscaling with FSR 3 frame generation since you wouldn't have access to DLSS frame generation. Now I didn't see 100% confirmation that it would have DLSS frame generation for the 40 series cards. It did mention frame generation being supported. Technically that could just be through FSR 3.1, but anyway. Also we have the latest XDSS upscaling available with 1.3, uh, so that's good to see as well. There's also confirmation of super ultra wide resolution support, which is really nice to see on PC because again, not every game gets that, especially games that would require a lot of cinematics to be looked at to make sure there's not weird stuff happening out off screen. It does have the Valhalla DLC. Again, this is coming out on September 19th, but let's go ahead and jump into the main new information we have today, which is the PC system requirements. And not only do I love the layout of this and the fact that it gives us the settings and frame rate and resolution that each of these is targeting, at a variety of resolutions and settings, which is really nice, uh, but also no upscaling employed in the system requirements. They specify that this is native resolution. Now, you, if you haven't paid attention to the latest AAA game PC requirements lists, you might not realize that's a big deal. But like the last big AAA game that dropped system requirements that I reported on was Star Wars Outlaws. And notice that even on something like their minimum requirements, uh, for playing at 1080p 30fps low, they're including using an upscaler at quality setting, and uh, that's not just for the minimums. They used an upscaler set to quality for their recommended specs, their high specs, and their ultra specs. In other words, all of the system requirements were given uh, based on already using upscalers. Whereas what we're seeing here with the God of War PC system requirements is that these are based on native resolution. So then if you wanted to then boost frame rates further, you could then use those upscalers, which is really nice to see. Now that being said, God of War Ragnarok did also run on PlayStation 4, meaning that it's, you know, it, we shouldn't really see quite as demanding of system specs as we would see for a PS5 exclusive uh, type title. So that is something to keep in mind. It's also something that we'll see uh, pop up in the CPU specs where if a game has to run on PlayStation 4, even if it's only at 30 frames per second, then uh, the CPUs can't go too crazy given the fact that there's uh, you know pretty weak CPUs in the PlayStation 4. So that's another thing kind of reigning in that even our uh, highest end CPUs on this list are still uh, quite a few years old and nothing absolutely crazy. But what might be crazy for some people is do you have 200 gigabytes free on your SSD? And do notice that this does say SSD. Um, it, it, you know, it, it never lists a hard drive even under the minimum spec. Now that usually doesn't mean you can't get a game up and running on the SSD, but if this PC build is based off the PS5 version of the game, that version of the game would be designed to run on an SSD, so do keep that in mind. And again, 190 gigabytes of space. So that was one place where the otherwise fairly reasonable specs kind of stood out to me as a, whoa, wait a second. Um, anyway, so if, if you're needing an excuse to get a bigger SSD or delete some games that you've left on there for a while, you might want to take a look at that. Uh, you need at least Windows 10 64-bit to install the game. Again, that would still support newer versions. It's just listing the minimum spec here. And it does suggest that you can run the game on 8 gigabytes of RAM if you're running at the lowest possible settings and only shooting for 30 FPS. But for anything beyond that, you would want to have 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now, let's go ahead and jump in in a little more detail uh, on, uh, you know, actually let's knock the CPUs really quickly out of here. So generally CPU performance is only slightly impacted by graphical settings 
and, uh, and also only slightly impacted by resolution. So generally your CPU is gonna set kind of your max frame rate you're able to achieve and you can adjust kind of graphic settings to ease up the burden on what your GPU is able to do. So if you're looking to play the game at 30 frames per second, uh, they're suggesting you have at least a, a Intel i5 4, 4670K or a Ryzen 3 1200. Now, if you want an idea of what those are, if I pull those up, uh, the, the i5-4670K was only a four-core, four-thread processor, and this isn't uh, even very new. This is from 2013. This is over 10 years old. So with that in mind, they're only looking for an i5, so a mid-range processor from 11 years ago if you just want to get in the door to play the game. For Ryzen's, they're going all the way back to a low-end Ryzen uh, from the uh, first-gen Ryzen series here with the Ryzen 3 1200. Again, only a four-core, four-thread CPU. And while this one, again, is newer than the Intel CPU they listed, this one coming out in 2017, that's still seven years old, and this was a low-end chip seven years ago. Uh, so again, I don't think they're asking for a whole lot to get in the gate. And then going up from here, notice they go to an i5-8600 and a Ryzen 5 3600, then they up that to a i7-7700K and a 2700X. Notice that these are going up a tier in terms of um, you know, i7 and Ryzen 7 versus i5 and Ryzen 5, but they're going back a generation year because it's going from the 8000 series to the 7000 series and um, from the 3000 series to the 2000 series. Notice it holds that here. And then it goes up a bit to here, especially on the Intel side of things. But again, notice that if you're just shooting for 60 frames per second, as you increase the graphic settings, you might get a little more CPU burden, but not usually that much. Uh, so in other words, to hit 60, I think the way you should interpret this is for your CPU to be able to handle a 60 FPS average, uh, being in the ballpark of an i5-8600 or a Ryzen 5 3600, somewhere around there should get the job done. Now, what are those? The i5-8600 is a six core, six thread processor, uh, you know, mid-range chip uh, from uh, February of 2018. So again, we're talking about six-year-old mid-range chip, so nothing too crazy to ask right there. And the Ryzen 5 3600 is again a mid-range chip. This one did have hyper-threading, so, oh, well, simultaneous multi-threading, so we have six-core 12 thread. Uh, and this one is coming from 2019, so a five-year-old mid-range chip from AMD right there. Uh, and, and again, they did also shift to an i7-7700K, which is four core eight thread and goes back a year. And then you know we have the Ryzen 7 2700X, which is eight core 16 thread, but again, goes back a generation. Uh, this one going back to April of 2018. Uh, and then they do pop into the 11-600K, which is a bit newer, but still not uh, anything crazy. And the 1100 series was basically the same as the, t the, the 1000 series. So, and that's from 2021. And the Ryzen 7 3700X, eight core 16 thread, but again, not too huge of a step up in gaming performance still from 2019. So I don't think the CPUs are anything crazy here to get at least a 60 FPS experience. And if you have newer stuff, you can probably just go up from there. Uh, so let's come, jump into the GPUs where they're saying just to get in the door with 1080p 30 frames per second average at low settings, native resolution, so you could you know use FSR upscaling to boost your frame rate from there, uh, or to even maybe squeeze in a slightly weaker GPU. Uh, they're saying you just need a 1060. Now they didn't specify where, whether it was the 1060 six gigabyte or three gigabyte, so potentially some VRAM issues if they meant the six gigabyte version, but uh, they also from AMD listed the Ryzen, uh, uh, sorry, not Ryzen, the Radeon 5500 XT. Now these GPUs are generally comparable in gaming performance, although that can definitely vary game by game. So this seems like a reasonable pairing, uh, which some games kind of have stuff that's just all out of proportion in relative performance, so it's kind of questionable. By the way, this is the Tech Power Up relative performance chart. It gives you good ballpark figures, but especially for older graphics cards on, on, on newer games and when VRAM can go out of things, this is not by any means perfect, but this is how I'm gonna help you if you don't know how your GPU stacks up against the ones in this list. And I will link this in the video description. So you find what they're listing in this list and then you can find your graphics card. Like maybe you have a, uh, maybe you have, what was something kind of popular, maybe a 1660 Super or a 1070. Well, you can find that that's about 30-ish percent faster uh, than what they're listing as your 30 FPS, 1080p low settings GPU. So then you have a little bit of headroom to either turn settings a little bit higher and still stay at 30 FPS, 
or you have uh, you know maybe a higher frame rate uh, than the, their 30 FPS by you know 30 30 percent. Also, another thing about system requirements when they list 30 FPS or 60 FPS, they don't generally actually mean 30 FPS or 60 FPS. Usually, by 30 FPS, they mean um, it doesn't get to averaging 60, but sometimes they actually might mean 40. They just kind of use the numbers 30 and 60 as the only two options available because that's just tradition apparently. Anyway, <laughs> so again, don't assume this to mean an exact average on any of these settings. Assume it to be more of a ballpark figure. All right, so maybe you see where your uh, GPU fell in relation to those. And now we can look at the recommended settings to get medium settings at 1080p 60. I would assume that would be somewhere, uh, you know, again, averaging 60-ish medium settings. We don't know exactly what that means. I would assume high settings are something close to what the PS5 runs at. I would assume low settings may be below uh, PS4 settings, or maybe they are PS4 settings. It's hard to know for sure, but this, this, uh, this could potentially be somewhere in between. The, the PS4 and PS5 settings, but I'm just kind of speculating there. They're asking for a 2060 Super or a uh, uh, Radeon RX 5700. So where do we fall in, in, in performance here? So again, going from our 1060 up to a 2060 Super, uh, did I mention Super before? Yeah, 2060 Super is a bit of a performance jump. And again, you might find your GPU in this list and see how its relative performance stacks up. Right, so if we're gonna scroll up to that 2060 Super, that's about a 78 performance increase. And the uh, uh, Radeon RX 5700 is again in a similar ballpark, even if they're not exactly matched. I'm gonna go ahead and lock this one in now so we're kinda of seeing where we're at. And it wasn't quite doubling the performance of the 1060, but it was near enough to doubling the performance for going from you know, maybe not really 30, but like 40 up to around 60 makes sense even with the resolution increase. So I think these seem like a reasonable choice and pairing here. Uh, now, if you wanna to go to 1440p and increase from medium settings to high settings and stay at 60 FPS, they're asking that you jump all the way up to a 3070 or an RX 6800. Notice it's the non-XT version. Also notice the 3070 is an eight gigabyte card. So it's looking like 1440p at high settings is being confirmed by the developer if this ends up being accurate to at least be okay on an eight gigabyte graphics card, which is not always a given. Although do notice that this is not the ultra setting. So it is possible that the ultra settings maybe would have gone beyond that eight gigabyte VRAM buffer. We don't know for sure based on what we're seeing here. Let me know in the comment section if you're interested in me benchmarking this game when it releases. Now, so the 3070 and the 6800 when compared to our 2060 Super, notice we're staying at 60 FPS. We're going from medium settings to high settings and from 1080p to 1440p. So we would expect there to be a, a pretty healthy jump in um, what it's asking from you. And again, you might find your GPU somewhere in between and get where, where it kind of falls relatively to what you're seeing here. Like if you have a 4060, you're 22% faster than that 2060 Super, but you're still not as powerful as what they're asking for for 1440p high at 60, which is an RTX 3070. Also notice again that they're talking native resolution. So maybe kick on DLSS quality and, uh, and a much weaker GPU might've been okay, right? So your 3070 comes in 55% faster and we're jumping resolution and graphic settings tiers. So that seems reasonable. And if I set this as the baseline, we can see that the RX 6800 is generally faster, but not by such a wide margin that it's ridiculous to pair the 6800 with the 3070 on this list. So uh, that seems to uh, you know, make sense to me. And then if you wanna go up to 4K resolution, stay at 60 FPS and keep high settings. So we're just jumping from 1440p to 4K, but otherwise keeping about the same performance tier. They're asking that you go from a 3070 to a 3080 Ti or from a 6800 to 6900 XT. Notice that both of these GPUs are above eight gigabytes of VRAM. Now that's not necessarily mandatory, but notice that it is the 3080 Ti and not the 3080. The 3080 was a 10 gigabyte card and the 3080 Ti was a 12 gigabyte card. That is potentially significant, but again, we won't actually know until we see the, how the game performs in detail uh, with third party testing. Uh, but if we go from that 3070 to the 3080 Ti, we see that that's again a 46% you know, performance jump going from 1440p to 4K, but keeping the settings the same. 
And if we compare the 3080 Ti, uh, with the 6900, it looks like this chart, oh, wait, there's the 6900 XT right there. This chart has a 6900 XT just a little bit behind the 3080 Ti. So again, this seems like a reasonable pairing to be in roughly the same performance ballpark. And again, especially at 4K resolution, there's a good chance that you could use at least quality level upscaling, if not beyond that, and then get a significantly weaker GPU to do fine here, which would be really nice to see. And then if you want ultra settings at 4K60, so we're really just moving from high settings to ultra settings and keeping everything else the same, they're moving from your 3080 Ti to your 4070 Ti, and for, or from your 6900 XT to your 7900 XT. And if we go ahead and take a look at how those pair up versus our 3080 Ti and 6900 XT, so if we go from a 3080 Ti to a 4070 Ti, it's like, well, whoa, let's double check here. 4070 Ti, 3080 Ti. And if we look at our relative performance chart, we're talking extremely similar performance ballpark. Now, there's a bit more of a gap if we go from the 6900 XT AMD baseline uh, to the... Uh, what, what was it, the 7900 XT, which is more like a 26% jump in performance, according to this relative performance chart, which again, in some games will be a little bit different. So that's the one thing that I think looks a little odd here in this chart, is that you're not making a huge jump uh, going from high settings to ultra settings for the NVIDIA GPUs they chose, but you are for AMD. However, there are also certain games that just overperform on the 40 series, or you could look at it as underperform on the 30 series relative to the 40 series. And this relative performance chart really just gives you ballpark figures. So it's possible that this is a game that just runs better on the 40 series and that that actually does end up making sense uh, once we actually see how the benchmarks uh, turn out. So. Anyway, overall, I think this looks pretty good. Like I said, lots of uh, feature sets confirmed that you would wanna see on PC. These are all native resolutions. So there's a lot of wiggle room for using upscaling to boost performance from here. And it does look like there's a lot of scalability from running the game uh, at the, I just wanna run the game mode to uh, maxing things out and having it look pretty great. And hey, look, you don't need a 4090 using DLSS just to hit 60 FPS at max, max settings 4K. So I've played this game on PS5 and it already looks pretty good there. And I would imagine the ultra settings probably push a little bit beyond what the PS5 was capable of. And, uh, and, it, and we can probably also target higher resolutions and, and, and uh, frame rates and everything on PC. So pretty cool. Uh, if you guys are excited about this one, again, let me know in the comment section and I could include it in my benchmarks, maybe a benchmark just for this game or start using it in my regular uh, GPU review benchmarking. Uh, let me know what you think, what you're interested from. And a huge thank you to viewers, subscribers, channel members. Um, man, channel members who click the join button to directly support the channel financially is absolutely huge. A massive thank you. you. Get membership badges in return as well as early access to some videos. And in general, uh, if you're uh, interested in supporting what I do here with the benchmarking and news on the channel, uh, consider hitting that join button. Huge thank you to everybody though. No, that doesn't work out for uh, everybody's financial situation, which is perfectly fine. I hope all of you have an excellent day.